Welcome to Pentecost Sunday. Um, I'm going to open with prayer. Um, Father God, we come before you now. United we sing. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for letting us live in America. The the Help us, Father, to shine a light into our community, into our nation, and into the world around us. Be in this service. May your spirit flow up and down the aisle, touching hearts and lives and minds. Be with our pastors and bring forth, brings forth the word. And may we may we be a blessing to you, Lord, as we strive to serve you to the best of our abilities. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So we have a few announcements. Um, child protection training. The online training is up and running. If you've taken training before, you can do it online. Reach out to Peggy. Peggy, there she is. Um, and she will send you the link. Um, the next in-person training will be Wednesday, June 7th at 6.30 in the portable. How that? Um, the Wednesday night dinner. This will be the last meal of the summer. So come and enjoy it. It's going to be burgers and hot dogs, drinks and dessert. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. I knew he was going to say that. It is $8 for adults, $5 for children under 12. I've seen some of those 12 year olds. Well, I don't know if that's, that's a pretty good deal. Well, I know how my boys ate when they were 12. <laughs> um, vacation Bible School is coming up. The meeting for VBS is June 1st at 5 o'clock in the portable. Um, we have one service next Sunday, our first official service at the Black Creek Methodist Church. Renewal Sunday service is at 10 o'clock, meaning there's no Sunday schools, um, and there will be a catered dinner uh, following, which is in line with the Methodist Church, I understand. Um, the office will be closed tomorrow on Memorial Day um, here at the church. Um, in the bottom of your bulletin is the information about the ACT Basketball Camp um, coming up July 17th through the 20th. It's a really good time for young people to uh, to interact. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, April asked me or Strawberry wanted to. You want to do it? Sure. We need adults for CPS. We don't have anybody. To, we don't have an adult to lead out to the crafts, and we don't have an adult to lead recreation. So, come on. I know y'all want us to participate. It's gonna be so much fun. If we can't get enough adults, we can't do it. Yes, we're going to have to not be able to do it if we don't have anybody to come. All right, it's the last week in June, correct? Um, yes, yes. It's yes. the last week in June. So come on, let's all jump on board and help our children have a great time with BBS this year. Um, if you, if you uh, want to volunteer, you can reach out to the office or to April. She has office hours. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you, sir. Is that time? It is that time. I've read the announcement. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to sing Pentecostal Power, and I believe it's just protect, uh, projected. I don't believe it's in this uh, Methodist book. So uh, let us all stand. <laughs>
reading. It is Psalm 104, um, projected and on page 827 in the hymnal. We will be reading. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting mad. I'm slow. Verses 24 through 35. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In the wisdom you have made them all, the earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan, whom you formed to play in it. These all look to you to give them their food. When you give to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I am being. May my meditation be pleasing to the Lord in whom I rejoice. Let sinners be consumed from the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord.
time for passing the piece and so pass the piece. <laughs>
race uh, coach, runner coach, track coach, cross country. Yeah. So anyway, we learned that too. So we've got good neighbors. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Back there. Um, the baby that was a twin that was born at one town. Um, she passed away from it. Oh. The family just kind of. She, she was a fighter though. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you all for praying for my dad, Bobby. He seemingly had a surgery Tuesday. It went well, and a lot of the pain he was dealing with that related to the bladder inflammation from chemo is gone. Amen. He sounds better now after surgery than he did before. So, praise God. Thank you. Praise God for the work he's doing in Bobby's life. Anybody else? Anything else? Seeing none, let us pray. Almighty, ever-loving, always faithful, present God, oh, how we praise Thee and thank You for a new day. Thank You for the opportunity to come into Your house and worship You today. And uh, that's because of a lot of men and women have fought and gave their lives for freedom that we might enjoy this moment together. So thank You, Lord, for all those who serve and have served, especially those who've paid the ultimate price for our freedom. Thank You, Lord, we pray. Bless their families, loved ones who are left behind. May they be aware of your presence, filled with your spirit, and comforted by the hope that you bring. We pray for our nation. We pray for our leaders. We pray for our, the world we live in, God, that there might be revival. Turn the world's heart back to you. We thank you that we have opportunity as your missionaries and be about ministry here as ambassadors on foreign soil, right where you've placed us. And may we do well, Lord, in bringing in your kingdom, ushering it in here on planet Earth while there's yet still time. May we be found faithful in our service to you and others. Thank you for the healing work you're doing among us. We thank you that you hear our prayers and that you care. So we pray now, we pray hard, Lord, for our loved ones, for all these that were mentioned. We just pray for the miracle of healing. May that come in all forms and shapes and sizes and ways so that you might be glorified in all this work, Lord. We trust your grace is sufficient, so come and work miracles. And we thank you for the opportunity just to worship. For you alone are worthy. And that's why we're here, to lift high the name of Jesus, to praise you, to learn about you, and to leave this place better able to serve you. So we pray now for all those who couldn't be here with us today. May they be safe and full of your presence and aware of your presence right now. And we pray for safety tomorrow for all those on the roads traveling and moving about. Some make good decisions in Jesus' name. We pray. We pray together now as Jesus taught the first disciples to pray. We pray together saying, Yes, tomorrow is Memorial Day. And since 1868, it's been so recognized in our nation as a day set aside for one of those who died, who fortunately gave their lives in combat and related uh, issues throughout the world since the inception of our nation. About one and a half million folks left us and never came back. I buried throughout the backyards of the world. But then there's some that I want to remember today that did come back. But they too had a hard time 
with life, through physical injuries, mental injuries, and wound up dying most by their own hands. And according to the VA, we're losing about 20 of those people a day. 20 a day. Some of you know or at least heard of individuals that fall into that, so that category that would say the cause of our nation but, and did come home but for whatever reason was unable to continue their lives. So I wanted to, uh, we did this about six, eight years ago, it was somewhat well received, but uh, I'm asking not to dwell on the quality of this performance, but actually the message, because it is a story. So just listen to the words and as we think of those people who died in the foreign fields of combat, and we also think of those who died here in our own area.
They clean up and make their way back. Let's open our Bibles and find Acts chapter 2 together. It's kind of a long section, but it tells the whole story of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, that part at least. We move over just a little bit from where we left off last week. The promise of the Holy Spirit, the ascension of Jesus. Now we get to look at the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Thus all this red. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fires appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of them in our own native language? Y'all want to help me pronounce all these words coming up? <laughs> Parthians. Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from both Rome, Jews, and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not, not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my Spirit. And they shall prophesy. Verse 19, And I will show portents in heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Word of God for the people of God. You know, we have this strange ability to make sounds and noises that come out of our mouths. And sometimes those sounds and noises make sense when we hear them. And at other times, it's a little harder to understand what somebody was saying. Look, we call it communication. Are y'all good at communicating with other people? <laughs> do, do people have a hard time understanding what you're saying sometimes? It happens to all of us. And in today's lesson from uh, Acts, we have a lot of people speaking a lot of different languages. And now I'm being interrupted. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even using, I'm using the full time. Look, look, look in there. Why you made your way up here? Thank you. Now, double power. <laughs> Triple power. Count the Holy Ghost. Count the mics. We're good to go. That, sound, that does sound a little better, doesn't it? Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. So when's the last time you had trouble communicating with someone? A few months back, I read an interesting article 
with Louis von Ahn, the director of Duolingo, the most popular language learning app in the world. Almost 50 million people around the world use this app. Have anybody in here got it? You do? Does anyone in here speak more than one language? Let me ask that. A couple? One, two, three? Oh, nice. Well, 50 million people around the world use this app every month. He was born in Guatemala where he saw a vast gap in educational opportunities that were offered to the poorer children. As he said, what happens is the people who have money can buy themselves the best education in the world. And because of that, they remain having a lot of money. Whereas the people who don't have very much money barely learn how to read and write, therefore remain not having very much money. He created Duolingo as a free learning app because he wanted every person on earth to have an equal opportunity to learn another language, especially English. According to Louis, about 800 million people around the world are trying to learn English in order to lift themselves out of poverty. It was always his dream to give the poorest citizens the same educational opportunities as the richest citizens in terms of learning a new language. He claims that this is his proudest day when he learned that Syrian refugees were using his app and so was Bill Gates. <laughs> One of the richest men in the world, right? So in an interview with Forbes, he said, the moment I felt proudest was when I realized, wow, the richest man in the world is using the same system as the lowest people on the economic scale. And that for me, he said, is a pretty big thing. Now, back to languages. There's an old joke that used to be popular around the Pentagon that the different branches of the armed forces have trouble operating jointly because they don't speak the same language. For example, if you told Navy personnel to secure a building, they would turn off the lights and lock the doors. Army personnel would occupy the building so no one could enter it. Uh -huh. Marines would storm the building, capture it, defend it with suppressive fire and close combat. The Air Force, on the other hand, would take out a three-year lease with the option to buy it. <laughs> Did you know there are over 7,000 languages in the world? Wow! And you thought there were like three. Communication researchers believe that most of them share one common word. This one word has the same meaning in every language and it has similar pronunciation in almost every language. What is the universal word I'm talking about? Everybody in the first service said no. <laughs> but it's huh. <laughs> huh? Do people say that a lot when you're trying to talk to them? Huh? But that is the universal word. N.J. Enfield, professor of linguistics at the University of Sydney in Australia, he and his colleagues studied 31 different languages from 16 different language family groups, and they came up with the same conclusion. Huh? Is the easiest and fastest sound to make when we don't understand something that's said in a conversation. In an article of American Scientist, he writes, Huh? Does not stand for universal confusion. It stands for universal cooperation. It shows that there is a global need and willingness to pause a conversation and sort out the problems in the communication as they occur. So I feel a little better next time I'm speaking to somebody and they say, huh? <laughs> I think we'd all agree though, we would be more effective in our daily tasks if we had the ability to focus on that task and finish it, right? That comes from a word. Y'all like to learn a new word? Sitzfleisch. Sitzfleisch. It's German. It's a German word. And it's a, actually a professional compliment to tell someone that they have Sitzfleisch. It's literally translated sitting flesh. Refers to the ability to focus on a task and not stop until it's completed. In other words, you sit there until you get it done. Whatever it might be. 
I think we would all agree, wouldn't we, that our day would be more effective if we could really work things out, could focus and get her done? The believers in today's story were committed to sit splash, seat splash. They wanted to sit and wait as Christ had instructed them until they received the promised Holy Spirit. Boom! Then it happened. Verse 2 through 4. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now this is such a pivotal moment in human history. It's the beginning of the worldwide church. The Christian church. It's the kickoff even of the Great Commission. You remember when Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Remember that? This is where it all gets kicked off. You could also say it's kind of the countdown clock beginning of Jesus' return. We've got a lot going on in this passage. And it's also the moment when Almighty God poured out His Spirit on His sons and His daughters for the purpose of what though? Well, He wants to bring salvation to the world. So yeah, we can all say this is pretty important stuff. Pretty important part in the grand narrative of the Scripture. An important story. Now, let's turn... A little bit here to verse 4. All of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. What does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? And what is it that the Holy Spirit enables us to do? Good question, Pastor. The first great gift we receive from Pentecost is that the Holy Spirit fills us with the mind of God. We need that, don't we? We need the mind of God. The Apostle Peter explains the significance of this moment. He quotes the prophet Joel who spoke these words nearly 800 years prior to this event. Through Joel, God said, I will pour out My Spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men will see vision. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on My servants, both men and women, I will pour out My Spirit in those days and they will prophesy. So this is like a prophecy coming to us this morning. Let us hear it. Focus on us now for a second. What kind of dreams and visions do you have for this life on earth? Remember we mentioned that we want meaning and purpose last week. What is it? What would we do if we could alter human living with the way we live and the way we speak? Wouldn't we see a world governed by God's peace and hope? That's what we're about. Wouldn't our every vision and dream be filled with hope? I like to think so. And that's what the Holy Spirit did for the believers at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit reminded them that they have a big God. Amen? Big God that would equip them for any challenge. And we all face challenges today. So, but it fills us with the mind of God. What, what does that give us? God's passion. God's vision. God's hope for the world. It helps us speak truth into life circumstances. That's prophecy. Not just telling the future, but, for, but speaking a word into the present reality. Sharing our faith in God. That's the second great gift we receive from Pentecost. The Holy Spirit enables us to share our faith. Share God's grace. Share God's power. Holy Spirit gives us the desire and the ability to have faith in God. We want to tell our story. We need to tell our story. Every one of us has a different story. We all came to this thing different ways. And people need to hear it. People need to know it. People need to be encouraged by it. Draw them like it draws us closer to God. Just like the Holy Spirit did at the day of Pentecost. God-fearing Jews from every nation heard the believers declaring the wonders of God in their own language. How cool is that? The Gospel beginning to spread throughout the whole world now that everybody could understand it. In 1954, a young man named Paul Freed began transmitting a Christian radio program from a radio station in Morocco 
with the hope of spreading the message of Jesus to Africa and Spain. Not long afterwards, though, God gave him the vision and the desire to establish more radio stations in remote areas around the world in order to broadcast simple Bible teachings in as many languages as possible. And today, Paul Freed's vision from God became Trans World Radio, an international organization that broadcasts Christian programs in 190 countries and offers those programs in over 300 languages. That's a big ministry. On their website, they feature interviews with people who've become followers of Jesus through their program. A man from Serbia named Miloje was trapped in grief and hopelessness after the death of his wife and daughter. He was considering suicide. Then he was visiting his parents. One of the neighbors suggested he might find some comfort in this Christian radio program that she listened to. And of course, his life was radically changed when he heard the message of Jesus in his own language. As he says, quote, God freed me from a spiritual dungeon. Now I am part of the body of Christ and His church. End quote. Then there's Mahesh, a struggling farmer in India who was distraught over the ability to feed his family. He attempted suicide. One day a neighbor saw Mahesh sitting in front of his house and he asked him why was he so sad. He shared about his troubles and the neighbor shared with Mahesh the hope he found in Jesus Christ. He rec recommended that he listen to Through the Bible. That's a program that we listen to on our Christian radio stations. And he, it was carried on this radio program. And Mahesh began listening in his own Hindi language. And the message changed his life. As he says, God filled me with joy. And today he's a member of a small Christian church in his rural congregation town. And he says, God helped me sort out my problems in my life became a testimony for people going through depression. Isn't that great? Not depression, but that, that we have hope and encouragement and that we can be that hope, we can be that encouragement to others. And that's who we are. That's who we're supposed to be. And at Pentecost, God sent the Holy Spirit on a group of believers to fill them with the mind of God and, and enable them to share their faith. So we can't share without the presence and power and the help of the Holy Spirit, can we? That power, as we mentioned last week, is free and available to us too. And let me ask you, as we get ready to close, what vision does God have for you? How might God be wanting to work through you? Who needs to hear the hope of God from you. How does God want to work through you? Who needs to hear the hope of God? There are powerful and awesome dreams God has for this world. And He wants to accomplish it through ordinary people like me and you. And the only way God will turn these dreams into reality is by pouring out His Holy Spirit on us. And God has promised us this gift. But are we willing to pray for it? Have you prayed for a good feeling of the Holy Spirit lately? I dare you. Are we ready to let God use us for His glory? If so, God will work through us to bring hope and new life to a hurting world. That's what we're about. That's what we've got to be about, church. Let me pray for you as the praise team makes their way forward. And we focus more on this Pentecostal power, Lord. I pray, and I pray hard that You fill us. We open up our hearts, our minds, our souls our bodies to Your presence. Come, fill us, Lord. And if that makes us speak a new language, so be it. But Lord, I'm sure that it will help us teach Your truth and share Your truth with others with grace. And I know that that will bring hope to a hurting and lost and dying world. Lord, may we be found faithful in our service to You and others. Will You empower us to do that? That we might truly contemplate what our vision is, what our hope for tomorrow is, and how we'll make it and how we can help others make it. That is my prayer, and I pray you help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand and join us as we close today's service with let me get this on. Uh, Amazing Grace and Forgiveness. Oh.
Six feet under, could have been lost forever. 
here today on this Memorial Day weekend. May we go now in the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit rest on each of you and bring you Pentecostal power. Amen. Amen. Amen.